I'm back. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bat Feed, your source for DC, your source for all things, your source for Batman news, lore, and so much more. I'm guessing you guys have been wondering where I've been at. I uh, kind of ditched for a few weeks there. And the short answer of it is that I have school that I'm finishing up and I also got hitched. So there's that too. It was a crazy couple of weeks to say the least and I'm happy to be back at it, but also don't regret taking the time off. For today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a Batman theory. I've only done one other Bat Theory video. And if you wanna stay updated on more of this content coming out, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and comment your thoughts below. So without further ado, here is my Batman theory that Bruce Wayne isn't always necessarily Batman. So to further put it into words, and define what my theory is based off of is that there have been a lot of instances in the comics of other people taking on the mantle of Batman, both within the main continuity and outside of the main continuity of DC Comics. So before I jump into that, I theorize that given any number of circumstances, any amount of trauma from any source, anyone is capable of becoming Batman. Just like another popular theory that almost anyone could become the Joker given the right push. So here is my evidence for that. Example number one takes place in the non-canonical Elseworlds story called Superman Red Sun. And basically the gist of it is, rather than crashing into Smallville, Kansas and being adopted by Jonathan and Martha Kent, Kal-El lands in Soviet Russia during the Cold War and is raised on all of the propaganda of the communist regime led by Joseph Stalin. Batman has a role in this story too, but it's not conventional by any means. While talking with the head of the military police of the communist regime, Superman learns that the police captain was responsible for the shooting and disappearance of numerous civilians in Soviet Russia, two of which he recalls quite distinctly because he didn't have the heart to kill their son, but the way that their child looked at him haunted him to that very day. Superman takes this all in, and not much more is said about it, until many years later when it comes back to bite them. Ten years later, a large amount of terrorist bombing attacks are taking place in and throughout the capital of Soviet Russia, and the person responsible for all of these bombings is the mysterious Batman. After much more deliberation, Superman learns that he is indeed the son of the two people that the police captain killed and regaled to Superman in that story many years ago. Batman's actual identity is left unknown, but this is my first bit of evidence proving that anyone can become Batman given the right push. It doesn't end too well for Russia. Russian Batman as he confronts Superman with red sun lamps and basically has him trapped, but then Wonder Woman intervenes and Batman has no choice but to blow himself up with the bomb that he implanted in his own chest. Fun stuff. Next up in the chain of evidence is the Flashpoint Batman. Many of you might be familiar with the story of Flashpoint and the reboot New 52 that happened following that story, but the short of it is Barry Allen, the Flash, decided to run back in time and save his mother's life from Eobard Thawne, the Reverse Flash, and in doing so caused a massive wave of things to be altered in the DC Universe, such as him not having his powers anymore, Atlantis and the Amazons being at war, and instead of Thomas and Martha Wayne being shot in Crime Alley, Bruce is shot instead, and this causes Martha Wayne to become the Joker, and Thomas Wayne to become this Flashpoint Timeline's Batman. This Batman is much different than the normal one that we're used to who doesn't kill. This Batman wields guns without any thought, has no problem murdering criminals, and is extremely brutal and knowledgeable as he used to be a surgeon as Dr. Thomas Wayne. He's also an alcoholic and not a very hopeful dude, as you've probably gathered at this point. But as soon as Barry Allen runs into him, 
and tells him that this isn't actually how things are supposed to go and that his son Bruce is alive in the other timeline, Thomas Wayne regains a little bit of hope and decides to aid Barry Allen in his quest to set everything right again. Here we see a Batman driven similarly by the motivation of his son being murdered, but all the way to the extreme of giving in to his dark side, although there was a bit of redemption near the end. This proves that anyone can become Batman, given the circumstances. This proves even further in my mind, my theory. My third and final piece of evidence is some Something that happened more recently in the Batman comics. Ooh. And that would be Booster Gold decided to give Batman the best wedding gift of all and travel back in time to save his parents. But what ends up happening is kind of similarly to Flashpoint, this harsh new reality where everything is different and Batman was going to be marrying Selina Kyle, except in this universe, they never met and she's a serial killer that's locked up in Arkham Asylum. Meanwhile, Bruce is living a happy life with his parents until Booster, in an effort to fix everything, brings Catwoman to the house and she murders his parents in front of his eyes. Needless to say, Booster was a little upset. But along the encounter and the adventure, they encounter this mysterious new Batman who has no problem killing people, is extremely grim, and tries to kill them around every turn. Eventually, it's revealed that this version of Batman is Dick Grayson. Because Bruce never found him to take care of him, he turned down a vengeful path of murder and vigilantism. And it just goes to show how impactful the relationship between Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson actually is. But it also shows, again, more proof for my theory, and that there are any number of possibilities and splinter realities out there where other people become Batman without any inspiration from Bruce himself. So now that we've covered the evidence for, what's the evidence against? I would say the evidence against it is probably just primarily throughout DC Comics. In all of the alternate realities and dimensions, most of them contain an iteration of Bruce Wayne as Batman. Even on Earth 2, where he sacrifices himself along with the other two members of the Trinity to defeat Darkseid, or on Earth, ugh. Then you have Earth 89 and Earth 66, the Adam West and Michael Keaton iterations, respectively. So majority-wise, Bruce Wayne is Batman in the multiverse, but I'm just trying to show that throughout the multiverse, Bruce Wayne doesn't always have to be Batman. So that concludes my theory. If there's anything else that you guys can think of, any other people who have become Batman without inspiration from Bruce Wayne, or any more evidence for or against my theory, let me know down below in the comments. I'm happy to hear it. I love hashing things out and, and hearing what the other fans have to say, so I want to hear from you guys. So thank you so much for joining me for this video, and uh, remember, the night is always darkest before the dawn, and the dawn is coming. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.